we all know that in the S phase of the cell cycle, DNA replication takes place, right? And replication initiation takes place at the very transition state from G1 to S. But have you ever imagined that in this one cell cycle time, why the replication does not take place twice? Or let's say one round of replication. After that, why does another round of replication does not take place? Think of transcription. Transcription can go on and on multiple times, right? But why can't replication go on on and on? I mean, clearly you can understand that if replication goes on on and on, you would have N, 2N, 4N, and that's how your chromosome number would increase. So clearly you have to think about the ploidy as well. Isn't it fascinating that how really cell ensures that the event of replication takes place only once during one cell cycle? In this video, we'll talk about the molecular mechanisms, the details of how cell really regulates this process and what is the importance of it and exactly the genetic factors that is governing this process. So st stay tuned till the end of this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Now, really, this question was bothering scientists for about 20 years that why replication takes place only once during the cell cycle. What people thought that, okay, the components which are allowing the replication to happen, such as the origin of replication complex, that is only present in the S phase, not any other phase. That's why scientists took samples from several phases of the cell cycle and they can obtain several phases of cell cycle by using several inhibitors that I'm not talking about right now. But they collected protein samples or the cellular extracts from several cell cycle phases and then they run that on a gel. While they probed for the origin of replication complex, which is absolutely essential for replication to initiate, they found something striking. They thought that only one particular phase, that is S phase, there would be the expression of these origin of replication of con origin of replication. But it turns out at every phase that they have collected sample from have this ORC complex. And this was pretty confusing to them at that moment that how then, what, what is the alternative mechanism? It took at least 40 years to understand that. Now, it turns out all of the phases have their DNA bound to ORC complex. But selectively at S phase, the ORC complex initiate the replication, right? Not in any other phases. How does that happen? So we are right now at the end of a mitotic division. It's a beginning of the G1 phase and ORC is found to be associated with the DNA. Now, several components such as CDC6, CTD1, all of these gets associated with the ORC complex. Along with that, MCM helicases gets associated. Now we know that at S phase starting point, the replication also starts. So beyond this G1 point, something really need to give a go signal, which would allow the replication to start and replication bubble to form. It turns out the S phase cyclins, which are produced late G1 and peaks in the S phase, they are the ones which said, which, which would give the go signal. So S phase cyclin phosphorylates several components of this origin of replication complex. It phosphorylates CTD, CDC6, and also MCM2 and 7, right? As a result, the replication can initiate. In technical term, it means origin of replication complex firing. Now it is ready to start the process of replication. And the start signal is given by S phase cyclin CDK complexes, which are cyclin E and CDK2, right? Now, 
After that, what happens is the CTD1 and CDC6, just after it is phosphorylated, that was the trigger point when the replication started. They would dissociate from the complex, from the ORC complex. ORC itself would fall off while, while the replication bubble is created. Now, these MCM helicases actually unwind the strand and other enzymes are allowing the replication to progress smoothly, forming the replication bubble to sort of uh, expand and creating new DNA strands. But soon after the replication bubble is progressing in the both sides, you can see the origin of replication complex again in the, again attached to the newly synthesized strands, newly synthesized daughter stand, strands. But the problem is replication does not restart. ORC uh, just get bind to the DNA in a repetitive fashion. But replication does not take place in a repetitive fashion. How does it happen? It turns out that CDD1 and CDC6, which are basically the starting signal or the trigger factors which would allow the origin firing cannot bind to the ORC again if they are phosphorylated. Question is who is maintaining their phosphorylation state throughout the other phase of cell cycle? Turns out at the end of S phase at the end of S phase one cyclin comes up which is cyclin P which pairs with CDK1 and at and mitotic phase at the end of G2 phase it really picks up their concentration right so the cyclin B CDK1 complex otherwise known as maturation promoting factor complex they can maintain the phosphorylation state of CDC6 and CTD1 ensuring that they cannot bind to ORC anymore further ensuring our replication initiation scenario does not repeat that is why replication initiation takes only once and only once in the cell cycle now the question is still when the cyclin B CDK1 would maintain this phosphory phosphorylation level till death till the cyclin B and CDK1 complex is there right it turns out at the beginning of the G1 phase cyclin B and CDK1 complex it's inactivated because the cyclin B is degraded so nobody is there to maintain this phosphorylation level but at the point of time the opposing force the, pho the phosphatases are active which works upon CTD1 and CDC6 dephosphorylate them once they are dephosphorylated they can reassociate with the ORC again so in the next round of division another replication event can take place hereby we can understand that by stringently monitoring the phosphorylation level of these triggering factors such as CTD1 and CDC6 cyclin B CDK complex and phosphatases play hand in hand to ensure that replication is restricted to a narrow time window which is the S phase and does not restart in other phases of the cell cycle and that is how cell avoids its detrimental consequences that is how beautiful cell has designed its strategy to ensure and duplicate its genomic material so i hope you enjoyed this video and the main part that we have discussed in this video is the s phase the association of the phosphorylation phosphorylation takes place and at the s phase they first associate then the phosphorylation takes place right but in other phases they cannot associate because they are already in a phosphorylated state they need to be first dephosphorylated and then rephosphorylated in order to start another round of replication but the situation which is created by these cyclines does not allow to do so that is why the replication is restricted to the s phase so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you